often horses would come and they hadn't been touched. They had manes like this long. Yeah, yeah. And we used to deworm them. We used to get like double handful of bots used to come out of them. You don't see a bot in a horse today. Mm, mm. Because, you know, these breeders are deworming them all the time. Uh, they're prepping them for sales. They're model coddling them. And I think that is one reason. But I also, funny enough, I think this horse sickness too is another. I don't know. I don't think we really know what it's doing to our industry. Well, we know that the In The Box Seat podcast is now proudly sponsored by Score 6 and Score 10, which is the latest soccer bet that uh, soccer bets that uh, Gold Circle and Tab Gold have have uh, put up and I uh, hope that you're getting involved in the score six and the score ten and the guests in the studio today well one is my colleague he's taking Andrew Harrison's <laughs> place um, and the other is Frank Robinson and both are avid soccer fans one is a uh, just get it right now who's Liverpool who's Manchester United I'm a diehard Liverpool fan Warren Frankie, you're yeah. a Man United. Okay, so, so let's not... There's let's a bit of rivalry here. <laughs> <laughs> long-suffering Liverpool fan next to me. <laughs> no, it's, it's not long-suffering. It's, it's just that, um, I mean, we've got Champions League football. They haven't. They've got Europa League football. I mean, that's a, that's, <laughs> Goes okay. that's a downgrade there. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a bit about soccer later on, but it gives me great pleasure to welcome uh, Frank Robinson, trainer Frank Robinson, into the uh, box seat today. And uh, we're going to learn about him and his story and his business uh, during the course of the next half an hour or so. And uh, Ray Radhikrishna is taken over from Andrew Harrison while uh, my bushy-haired barefoot friend is uh, out, I think, in the Kalahari on three weeks' holiday. Frankie, you've known Andrew for a long time too, yeah, haven't yeah. you? Always been barefoot and bushy-haired. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> He's never changed. Eh? Never changed. Yeah, Andrew, enjoy your holiday. And uh, we do like to pull the mickey out of you, but we miss you. He's exploring uh, the wilderness. He's exploring the wilderness, absolutely. Do you and remember uh, the place with his hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's lovely to have you deputizing and, and nice, sitting good to be in. Warren. Thank you. And it's nice that you've come to join us. And you, Rahil, will be joining us for a couple of weeks to come because Andrew's away and I'll be away as well for some time. So he'll be part of the team and we look forward to it. Frankie, um, yeah, let's talk, uh, let's start with, um, <laughs> with your story about, you know, how did you get involved in racing? How did you hear about horse racing going right back to when you were a youngster? Look, I first started because my parents were avid punters. Every Saturday morning, they'd have a race card out. When I was five years old, I could remember taking PAs, and I was always a big. Ra- they were always racing fans. My one aunt, funny enough, was very good friends with the Schimmels. Okay. And they owned a horse called Yats again, obviously. And on a Friday night, funny enough, they used to have a lot of people over there. I remember Dennis Dryer used to be there, Jill Dryer in those days with Schimmels. So, racing was, you know, a big, big part of our lives. Actually, we followed like keenly. So I'd followed racehorses for years and years. And um, when I got to about, I think it was 14, I um, came up to Summerfield on, a, on my little 50cc motorbike, funny enough, and just to look at this place. And I said, there's so many horses. And so I went to, first train I saw was Gail Thompson. Okay. So I, said to, I asked him, do you need anyone that you know, want to learn? He said, no problem, you can come. But I used to come before school and after school. And funny enough, that year we had Jamaican Rumba. He won the July that year. Okay, sure. And in that time, um, I spent a lot of time at the yard in the day. And funny enough, I got quite friendly with Johnny Nicholson at the time. And he said, well, come work for me. I can teach you more than these guys. <laughs> because, you know, you know, he's quite an outspoken guy and a uh, great horseman. Great horseman. I, sorry to interrupt you for a second there because mm. Rahil's quite still young in the industry. And, and I, I didn't know Johnny Nicholson in his... Uh, in his um, in his time as as uh, as a trainer, but I have met him in his retired days, when uh, yeah. <laughs> when um, Johnny Nicholson in his retired days, I met him at the club Summerfeld Club, and uh, what a great man! What an intelligent man! What a man who knows so much about. He kept me in th- intrigued for hours. He is a probably the gardener works with horses the best I've ever seen he, he w- used to always work hand in hand with horses we used to lunge horses all day long rain horses all day um, he used to spend a lot of time like lunging in the paddock before they went to work and all that stuff very good horseman great horseman 
When I actually got there, I said, he said, okay, when I be a trainer, these three horses here, you're going to look after these three horses. So I was a groom. Okay. So I started as a groom, but I, I learned what it's like to get chalk out of a horse, how to get up, you know, get horse looking good through him. Great horseman. He taught me everything about horses, feeding, proper like English feeder. And you know, he used to get horses from other people and just change their minds. He used to, I remember Mace came once to ride a gallop on Red Bishop. Now uh, he, he was a top sprinter, Red Bishop, on the computer form sprint. Uh, so Johnny said, so, okay, get on Red, B- Red Bishop, I'm going to get on Count de Barry. And he took him in the sugar cane for an hour, Mace. Mace was shocked. Couldn't believe it. He went into the sugar cane, went over barrels, <laughs> over logs, came back. He just changed their minds completely, these horses. And geez, he, I think he must have won nearly every big race in the country. Frank, you, <coughs> you talk about uh, making a horse look good. Raheel's got a question for you about making a horse look good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously your horses, they stand out. And um, is there any specific reason why the mane is plaited with your horses? Look, I plait the mane because I think it's, you know, I don't like the mane to be in the jockey's way when they're trying to change their stick or, or riding. And also, funny enough, I used to be a massive fan of Terence Millard's and he used to plait his horses. So, you know, I, I just started doing it. Um, but I think it makes them look nicer too. You know, it makes them look a bit prettier. It absolutely does, and uh, those horses, I mean, they, they, they stand out in the, in the parade ring. They stick out like a sore thumb, and I mean, your horses always look well, and that's obviously kudos to you, and it's, it's, it's good that uh, you're able to have horses that look well, and uh, your horses, they, uh, they perform well as well, so I'm, I'm sure it must give you great pleasure. I mean, and um, if we had an award for best turnout horses, I mean, that award would go to most of your horses. Like, I'm sure that they have in the that, UK and Dubai and yeah, stuff and, like and that. Yeah, and they have had a few... Uh, Best turned out, uh, the best turned out um, horse awards. Uh, I'm sure you've received a few of those. Yeah, over, well, it's funny. We see, even in Dubai, we got a few awards there for best turned out. I think it's down to feed. Eh? I mean, is it I not f- looks? I, I feed very well, and I, I give them also quite a lot of electrolytes and salts, so they retain water. When it also retains more water, they look bigger and shinier. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, when they're a bit dehydrated, then obviously they look a bit flatter um but you know you get certain trainers i mean you like for one marsh these horses you can see a mile yes. off you know yeah Sorry. there's 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 uh vaughan marshall there's as we, as we say so many times all the horses that are presented to race look so well uh vaughan marshall you mentioned in the cape there's of course the azzy team up in joburg yes. um they all look well but there's just those standouts that's yes, that's absolutely. what we're making but frankie uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Mr. Nicholson, Johnny Nicholson, and then after that you, you ended up with Herman, Mr. Herman Brown Sr. Now that would have been a, a, a learning curve and a job second to none. Yeah, it's funny because both trainers were champion trainers and they had different methods. Mm. Mr. Brown wasn't uh, that much um, like you get these trainers that were show jumpers that spent a lot of time doing that. T- he was more... He wasn't so hands-on with the horse, but he's very good eye for a horse. Right. He was very big on uh, feeding the best food you could get, and he, he wasn't hard on a horse, funny enough. He was quite light on his horses, um, and he was very good at looking at... He's funny, he used to look at their eye all the time, and you could tell how their liver was and all that, and he okay. taught me that, looking at a horse's eye. You can learn so much on a horse's eye, especially his color, the, the pink of his eye, if it's too red, he's hemoconcentrating, obviously, but it's tinged yellow, you know, he's liverish, and that, uh, or, or congested, you know, he's got so a virus. And I was, even today, I still use those things to okay. look at horses. I don't care. Okay. I'm more old school with that type of thing. And then how wonderful were you with the, that you had the privilege of, of continuing working and being with the family because you had Herman Brown Sr., whom I must tell you that I have some wonderful photographs at home in the old days where they used to paint the winning pictures and they used to paint it. It was a paint. I'm sure it, was, it looks like a paint anyway. From my grandfather's days. I mean, my grandfather had uh, uh, his first trainer ever was Herman Brown Sr. So I've got some of those wonderful memories at home. But then you worked for Herman Brown Sr.'s son, Herman Brown Jr. Sure. I mean, because mm-hmm. you still hadn't come into the yeah, game. I mean, you had that's How many another years ago le- is this? this is another legend. Uh, no, don't be rude now. We're not that old. <laughs> eh? <laughs> but then you worked uh, with Herman well, Brown Sr. What happened was, I looked after all Mr. Brown's babies. I remember that. that crop I had that year was N4 Singing Boy, some really top horses in that crop. And, so, and Herman had a yard next door of babies because he was going on his own. 
So when he went on his own, he, I asked him, I said, if you're going to, he said, no, you can come with me if you want. So I, from the day he started, I started with him in junior. Okay. Sure. And then I was there for a year. They had to go to two years national service. And Paul Lafferty came along and took my job. But he, he, I think he worked for a year and he went to America. Okay. She's uh, left after that. Then Desmond Egdis came along and was the assistant. When I came out of the army, then obviously I got my job back again. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and while you were with both Hermans, I mean, tell us about some of the horses that you worked with, champions, proper. Uh, why, just before you tell us about that, why do you think, and it, it's an interesting question, Raheel, is, you know, in, 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 the, in those days, the day, days that we're talking about, those, the, the horses were, I'm not saying, please, I, we, you know, we shouldn't have to always double back on ourselves and, and mm. justify what we're saying. The point is, in the old days, they seemed to be a proper hard champion horse. Well, they're good horses today, but not that olden day champion. Why is that? I think it's because horses weren't over prepared for sales. Okay. And um, they were left to rough it more, especially the horses up, you know, in the Karoo area. Right. A lot of top horses. Funny Decker, that's why I bought him. He was bred by John Slade. Okay. And John Slade said to me when he bred that horse, he bred him the old fashioned way. He left him out. Sure. He didn't give him much carb, just protein mainly. And as you can see, it's got bigger and better and stronger. And that's what horses used to do in those days. I mean, often horses would come and they hadn't been touched. They had manes like this long. Yeah, yeah. And we used to deworm them. We used to get like double handful of bots used to come out of them. You don't see a bot in a horse today. Mm, mm. Because, you know, these breeders are deworming them all the time. Uh, they're prepping them for sales. So they're model coddling them. And I think that is one reason. But I also, funny enough, I think this horse sickness too is another. I don't know. I don't think we really know what it's doing to our industry. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a virus that kills, and we're giving it every year to them. I don't know how to fix their heart, lungs. Yeah. I'm yeah, not good sure. Good point. Yeah, good point. So, yeah. I mean, if you ask the vets, they can't tell you either. They think it doesn't, but who knows, you know? Yeah. I'm not... Uh, the, the, the year that I can't remember... The, I mean, I, my first memory of horse racing, and, and maybe if I asked you that question, uh, of the horses that you remember in your very first time. I mean, I remember the Potomac, the Bush Telegraphs, mm. Sea Legs, Sloop. You know, that, that was when I started taking mm. a keen interest in horse racing. And those are champion horses. Fool's Home, Enchanted Garden, uh, and the list goes on. And, and you, looking at me, understandably, not heard, hearing no, of those no, horses. No, I mean, what, what you, probably, which probably are the horses that like you can start remember, uh, that you, um, your, your memory of horse racing? That Possibly the conglomerate when he when he won the July okay. and uh, and then it's after quite that recent. yeah recent and then uh, Marinaresco so it's not not too far uh, well back. Well, that's fine. It's yeah. it's good because it's he's young in the game and it's it's recent and it's good because we need new young blood. But that's a good answer with regards to that. And um, but let's go back then and talk about some of the champions that you guys well, had. When I was with Mr. Brown, obviously, I mean, Mr. Brown had one long line of twenty stables, and every horse was a top division horse. <laughs> And that's like a horse race at 100 and over, basically, today. Yeah. I mean, he had Jungle Class, was champion filly, uh, Bold West, champion filly, um, Turncoat, uh, Gate Crash, uh, um, Expertise, won 14 races. Sure. Um, Frontiersman, he had so many top horses. But, but funny enough, like David Payne had quite a few. Um, the Sid Laird days, uh, even Dennis Dry. He's really like... Today, you don't see top division horses. Yeah, yeah. Very few. Very few, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not a lover of merit rating, I'll be honest. I don't think it gives us enough time to, you know, they get hammered with the rating and then, you know, they're not going to get to where you want them to be. Yeah. Or they're too low and it takes... So I'm not really a lover of merit rating, I'll be honest. I'd rather go back to old handicap, let them earn their way through the divisions. Yeah, there's, uh, talking of handicapping, I was actually having a discussion with somebody on the car phone this morning while driving up to Somerville. And uh, there was a horse that recently ran second, punished in the merit rating. The winner of the race, I think, got punished even more. And I was talking to Garth Puller, another colleague and friend of yours. Yeah. Uh, what was that horse that he had? We were I think it was uh, Twice Golden. Twice Golden. Yeah. Uh, you know, hasn't won for yonks and, and ran it fourth the other day. And, and they punished the horse eight point, no, 15, 15 points. 15 points. 15 points. Yeah. Anyway, but that's for another debate. But uh, I don't think you'll be an orphan on the, on the, on the handicapping uh, debate. Then, uh, talking of racing families, and, and what I discovered is, is a distant cousin of mine is Patrick Riverland. And yeah. the Riverland family, too, have been, in, you know, you've been part of the, the I racing. I actually was very good friends with, with Paddy Riverland because I dated his cousin, Nicole, okay. for a while. And they stayed in Mentone Road there and they had this massive house, uh, tennis court, 
every Friday, Saturday, we had massive parties there. We <laughs> toured for years there. Yeah, I have a very good friend of mine, Paddy. I mean, today, even if we see each other, you know, it's like we talk, it was yesterday. Yes, yes, yeah. Very good family, lovely family. And, and that's, a, that, that's a good thing when you're so close with someone and it doesn't matter at the time, you sp- apart from one another, when you see them again, you can just catch up as if... Uh, yeah, we, we never had a yesterday. fight. We're always good mates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. um, Just to stray away from horses uh, for a second word. Yes. Soccer, you're bringing up that soccer No, again. no, no, not, no, not, not soccer, soccer, not okay. soccer. <laughs> you mentioned um, Lafferty, uh, Paul Lafferty had taken your job and then because you had left for the army. How was your experience in the army? And it was traumatic for us, eh? Jeez, that's a damn good sure. question because us youngsters, didn't, uh, yeah. we didn't go to the army. I would never have made the army. I'm the first to admit Oh, I tell you, it was traumatic because, especially me, I wasn't a per- I was quite a homely person. I yes. used to sleep out with mates. I've mainly, geez, you got bundled on this train, you arrived there, freezing cold. Oh, they chased you up and down. It was a, uh, it was, it was two hard years there. Are you happy to say you hated every second of it? Sure. But I'll yeah. tell you what, I will say one thing. It made a man out of you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you learn to iron your clothes, you learn to wash your clothes properly. And I'll tell you something, when I came out of there, I wasn't scared of a thing. Okay. I could stand on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere and hark, and I wasn't worried about anything. Well, that's probably then, Frankie, although it was a, a traumatic yeah. time and a time that maybe you didn't enjoy, but in the hindsight, you know, then maybe it's... I think it's, it, it, makes, some it builds your character. Yeah. I think every guy today should go from, not two, two is a bit long, maybe one year, as they come out of school, just give them that break, they haven't got to get a job, no pressure. And yeah. also they, you know, get taught to stand on their feet. But yeah. do you think the army is the same today as it was back nah, then? No, can never be. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that too. I mean, you talk to Andrew Harrison, you talk to Paul Lafferty, you talk to all those guys that, you know, I, I have somebody in my family who, you know, can go the other way, who went yeah. to the army and they went and fought in Angola and all this. And unfortunately, he's battling still today at the age of 51. Our good friends actually died in one battle. Yeah, he's, it, it's, it's not great, you know. I mean, PTSD great. is a real thing. Correct. You must it listen is. to uh, Laff. He said they used to call him nerves of steel. That's oh. what he says. I used to laugh at Laff. He said he was in the, the he was in the, Infant, uh, the horses there. Ask him about his days in the horse unit. There, yeah. he'll make you laugh. But interesting, uh, you know, that your question that you ask because yeah. you know, is the army the same those days as it is today? It can never be. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, how, how were the how were you guys fed there? And Whew, what were not, the much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> what do they call them? Rat packs. Jesus, we used to. I was quite thin in those days because I used to play a lot of soccer. But you know, I came out the army. I was really thin. They, 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 they toughen you up. They harden you up. Huh? Yeah. Food wasn't bad. I mean, it, we weren't starving. It was simple food, though. I mean, we could imagine. Just stuff for chocolate and stuff like that. <laughs> just, just Guilty eat. pleasures. We, yeah, yeah. We, used to, we used to buy chocolates. For one guy used to bring, and we used to pay big money for a chocolate. We were so desperate in those days. Yeah. yeah. And how often were you guys allowed to communicate with families, with the outside world as such? You could go to the phone, but the problem was we had no cell phones, so yes. we used to go to write letters. I used yeah. to receive letters D- from my family. Johnny letters and whatever. Yeah. yeah, lucky I didn't have a girlfriend or anything, so I didn't panic. You know, I was actually writing <laughs> no every commitment day. Issues. Yeah. <laughs> and it was worse for those acts. But um, yeah, to, you used to stand in line to phone home. I mean, we used to come home after basics was like two months before we came on our first pass. And after that, funny enough, I was in Kimberley and I started tipping to a, uh, a, st- a sergeant major there. <laughs> so I used to be on the, on the marching and he'd say, Robinson! <laughs> he used to come there, he'd take me to Kimberley and there was a little tattersaw, it was smaller than this, it was tiny. And he wanted a punt. <laughs> so what I said to him, you know what, you need to let me go home because I have to prepare a horse. Yes. So I used to get past that way. I used to come back, give him 500 bucks. And I said, no, the horse won. It went well. Okay, when are we going again? <laughs> so I managed to get 500 bucks. Sure, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot back then. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. worth going home for a week, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but goodness, God, that's, a, that, that's a lovely fun yeah. story. But do you know, we were just yeah. having breakfast earlier on with Louis Person, and we were just saying, and, and I'm going to, I've made a note of it, I'm going to bring it up. I mean, there are so many people, Rahil and Frank, in the industry that have got such great stories to tell. And I think it warrants a TV show. This podcast yeah. is a wonderful platform. We Absolutely, know that. Yeah. But we need where we can have two or three hosts and two or three guests and have a, co- a discussion around the table about stories like this. I mean, this is, I, I've known Frank since ever I've been in racing. Yeah. And you know, to hear these stories are really great. Um, Do you so know, when we got into racing assistance, we never got paid, most of us. It was just to try and get in the... You understand the parade room was a massive thing in those days. Yes. Was it sort of like voluntary work? 
No, no, we used to work hard, but yeah. trainers in those days, yeah, you want to come and take, okay, you can stop, but you, that didn't you pay stood, you, yeah, you, you, you Your remuneration was the experience. That, oh, that's, that's we, used to, we used to punt a lot, though, and it made you a good trainer because you had to back winners in those days. Sure, sure, And sure. Uh, because we didn't earn much. I mean, jeez, I remember those days, we used to go see bank managers put money on horses for us. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't get paid a lot. I can still funny remember one day, an owner, I walked in the parade ring, and Mr. Brown came in the owner, came into the parade ring, and the owner said to Mr. Brown, oh, Frank's put a punt into this horse. So Mr. Brown looked at him and said, well, what the hell do you think he's doing this for? <laughs> <laughs> Shut him up very quick. Because Mr. Brown, well, he's also pu- like punting. You know? yeah, well, that, yeah, that's well, racing, is but, punting. But, but, yes. but uh, correct, you, you know, not everybody is a punter and enjoys a flutter, but most people yeah. do, you know. And, and Frank, uh, in the olden days... Um, in the, those, they were huge punters. I mean, oh, yeah. they still are in the industry today. The bag but boys, Etienne from the Vestas. Yes. But they were characters on the race course. Eh? You yeah. know, at Gravel, I can remember there were 15 bookmakers standing against that fence in the front there, every race meeting, and people packed in front of yeah, them, yeah, yeah, punting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, touching on bookmakers, obviously nowadays it's, it's a lot different. They each have their individual sort of like box as such. How was it back then? How was bookmaking back then? It was massive. I mean, there was the ringer bookmakers. I mean, there was Gary Lee, Mark Lee. What's Lee, different Morris from it Lee. now to back then? I think if you don't stand on course, really. Yeah, everything's got digital now, Frank. Yeah. yeah. Everything's got on your phone, digital. Uh, that's, I think, the biggest thing. And also, too, there was no racing at home on your TV. So yes, you had, if you to, want, come. had to go to the course. Yeah. So the courses were packed. Uh, yeah, that's also true. It was a good yeah. vibe, yeah, very good vibe. But you should get more owners that way, too, because now people are sitting at home, they're watching at home, they're coming to the course. Yeah, yeah sure. I don't know if we'll ever get that back again. Do, what do you think could be the main reason as to why our uh, attendance rate has sort of dropped at race courses? Because, I mean, it's, it's now fully open for the public to come through and enjoy with their families. But, I mean, uh, the attendance rate is still quite low. You see, I don't know. It it's, 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 must be due to the culture. Because if you go to the UK, I mean, every race meeting is packed. Yes. Yeah, even midweek. Midweek, yeah. everything. Yeah. Even Australia. But it's mainly, you know... Old Pats come from England, the racing Australia, and I don't know if we'll ever get that culture really here, back again. Um, and those days too, you must realise those were like sort of the apartheid era, and we weren't an international sport, so everything local was massive. The rugby, the, the curry cup was massive. The um, the racing was massive. Uh, people were celebrities in this country, actually. Sure. Suddenly we went international, and every you know sort of got diluted everything here. Frank, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm happy because we can always have more, but I think we're very lucky in KZN particularly. Our, on, on some race days, we, we get a fair crowd. I mean, yes. I know it's never going to be the same as where mm. it's packed from roof to, to, to the finish line, uh, but uh, we're lucky we've, we've, got, uh, we've got people that come racing. We're lucky, I think. Yeah, look, yeah, I think if it wasn't for the Indians, the Indians are <laughs> safe racing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's the Indian culture because, you know, they are the lifeblood of racing and absolutely. the, the tail, yeah, especially, absolutely. and even owning horses. Funny, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and it's they always come in a share or some some guys not that wealthy, whatever. Takes a little slice of the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah but absolutely. without them, we'd be dead. Eh? Yeah, dead in the water. I agree with you, and, and and you've got to agree with that comment as yeah, well. Absolutely, because, absolutely. You know, we in KZN, we on the east coast. Uh, yes, we appreciate absolutely everybody in horse racing. Everybody plays their part. Every I haven't met anyone in horse racing, even if it's just an admin clerk or whatever it may be. Their contribution is valued, but yeah. we have got the Indian community, and we're blessed to have. And the they Indian enjoy community. the racing. I mean, it's, they love it's it. not it's only that they've it's new experiences uh, experiences to them. It's more that it's been passed down from their dad, their Correct. grandfathers, and Correct. Correct. their families Correct. that uh, enjoyed the game back then. And it's, it's like the it's, Chinese, it's the Japanese, the Asians. Yes. Yeah, funny gambling is in them. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like an, even us European people. We get like myself. I mean, my mother punts. My father used to punt. Yeah, ah, you know, it's just we all do. Yeah. 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 Would you yeah. say, for for racing folks, it's more the gambling that attracts them, or it's the actual racehorse and the race that uh, takes place? Probably a bit of both. I'd say both to you. Yeah. yeah, I'd say both. Yeah. Look, I mean, we'll never get a look. I love the sport. I love the horse more than the gambling. I'll yeah. be honest with you. I mean, I'm a purist with the racing, and I've always loved the history of racing. And the more these uh, race courses close or this close that's not good I don't think it's great for the industry sure sure. we need those old historic 
site, basically, you know. Let's talk about uh, uh, two gentlemen. Sadly, one has passed away, um, and, and the other legend, we are so blessed to still have him amongst us. Terence Millard, uh, the late Terence Millard, and of course, Mr. Orman Ferraris. Uh, you got the nickname Frank Millard, um, and you were just saying, because you were simply besotted with him. I was. Uh, he was... He was, he, he was so far ahead of everyone at that stage as a trainer. Horses looked outstanding. They were huge and massive. I mean, you know, you could you knew when you backed one of his horses it was just going to win. It was like buying money. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, yeah. those days a real chalice. And I can remember the first year he came in, he came with all these Argentinian horses, uh, Dearissimo, uh, Tecla Bluff, Tamer Bluff before that. Um, and he, he just suddenly took over. And then Ralph Rickson came along. He was very successful from the Cape. You know, they, but he had a very good formula, Terence Millard, because he had that place at Bloberg. They used to go in the sea every day, the ice water, um, the, his own private track, which we, he used to maintain, because uh, I was very good friends with Ian Lightfoot. He worked for me, and Ian Lightfoot was, worked for Terence Millard for years and years. I mean, if you look at all his horses, Lustre, he rode them the first time out. And he used to sit on them, and when they came to Durban, they'd come well with it. So they, so they got an extra boost, and they were good horses, you know, but whew, his record is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Mr. Orman Ferraris, you still speak to him every day, you're every telling day, me? Every yeah. day, No, he's a good friend of mine, Mr. Ferraris. Um, he's taught me a lot. Very great trainer. Wow, what a great trainer. Uh, I was interviewing MJ yeah. Woodendahl yesterday. Sorry to interrupt you for a second. Uh, interviewing MJ Woodendahl yesterday, he said that Mr. Ferraris is bringing out a book. Is that yeah, true? Oh, yeah. well, we've got to get a copy of yeah. that. That's, uh, got, only, the only I books I read... I hope you put all the stories in there, though, because he's, <laughs> he's got quite a few. Uh, because the only books I read are the race books and uh, books on... I mean, I've read the Pocket Power yeah. Story, uh, Frankie de Tori. I only read the racing books, nothing else. Sorry, I interrupted um, you. What's his name? Terence Millard. Yes. If you were to... Uh, just say you had one horse and you had to send it to a specific trainer in the peak and it's only between Terence Millard and Omen Ferraris, who would it be? <laughs> that's a tough question. Yeah, that's a clever question. <laughs> probably I'd send it to Mr. Ferraris because he wouldn't forgive me for saying <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, yeah, one thing about Mr. Ferraris, whew, he's a, he's, he doesn't take shit from no one. Yeah, that's yeah. quite right. That's what stood him good. That's a good stead. Do you know, you used to send him two horses and you got them off the float. And one leg went left, one leg went right. He put them straight back on the float, and he found out they'd ever send me a piece of shit like that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I heard that story. You know, another story I heard was uh, um, <laughs> another story I heard was an owner of uh, Mr. Ferraris's one day. I think it was at his office. I'm going back years, and he, he opened up the newspaper at his office, and he saw. He said. Uh, White teacups running. My horse is running today. Yeah. Gosh, Mr. Forrest didn't tell me. I better set off to the races. He got in his car. He fled off to the races. Got there just in time. The horses were coming into the ring. He, puffing and panting, he walked up to Mr. Ferraris. He said, Dave, he said uh, Mr. Ferraris, my horse is about to run. I mean, you didn't tell me. I nearly missed it. Mr. Ferraris looked at him and said, what's wrong? Can't you afford to buy a race card? <laughs> you know? So that was him. I mean, that, that was him. And and, all-time and trainers were like they that. They were huh? like, all like that. They took no nonsense. There was a very good trainer in Cape Town. I'm trying to, what is his name? Um, and if you, while you're thinking of his name, if you, didn't, if you didn't pay bills also, they didn't tolerate no, that. Nothing, out, 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 nothing. out. Nothing. Yeah, so Brian's talking about all those... I think he trained Will, Willie Clebb, his name was. So Brown told me, uh, uh, oh, what's his name now? That owner, um, Jaffe. Oh, yes. He had a horse running on the Saturday. So Jaffe phoned him on the Wednesday and said, Look here, uh, how's my horse He said, oh, Don't worry, I'll call you on Friday. So he phoned him on Friday. And Willie Clebb said, No, don't worry, come to the course in the morning and I'll tell you in the morning. <laughs> Got in the morning, he said, oh, I'll see you in the parade ring. They got to parade and the horse was 6 to 10. It's been claimed down like 10 times. And it won. But that's what they were like. You know, they were very secretive. Yeah. And, and you know, another Games lovely... Games changed like that. Uh, a lovely story uh, I also heard. Uh, and it was um, quite recently, actually, a couple of years back. You know, trainers, as we all know, wake up early in the very early and go to bed fairly early at night. And uh, owner had phoned. He wanted to hear about his horse. So he phoned his trainer, I think, at quarter to 10 that evening. Sure woke up the trainer and said, you know, I want to talk about my horse. And, and the trainer was, he was very polite and said, no, this, that, next thing. Next morning, quarter to three, he phoned his owner back. He said, oh, I'm just phoning to see you. He said, but I'm sleeping. What are you doing? He said, well, when you phoned me last night, that's what I was doing. I was also sleeping. And it's, you've got to, you know, that's, wow. it's a tough job. Yeah. You're working at different times. 
Um, okay, so Frank, uh, Frank Millard was your nickname, Terence Norman. I also want to touch on uh, a gentleman that was part of your team, I see now with MJ Udendahl, Rasta. Oh, yeah. Um, he's now the chairman of the Grooms Association. He's also, he must have attended to some top horses in his time. Oh, yeah. And he actually came from us from Old Man Brown. He was there. And then, he, he, do you know, I'll tell you a funny story about Rasta. He looked after a horse in Joburg that won a race. And it was a horse called Kiev. It, they, they had painted this horse. And it was a ringer. Okay. And the horse won. And when it came back to the first box, it started raining. <gasps> and this black started to run off the horse. And it was a maiden. And Kiev was like a six-time winner. I remember Jay Joseph had him. <laughs> so Rasta... All the grooms were told they've got to unsighted. No, they can't be interviewed. No, they went missing. That's how he came down here. And he actually, the first guy I think he met was Shane Humby. Okay. He was working for Mr. Brown, and then he started working for Mr. Brown. But he's been all over the world, Rasta. I mean, he, <laughs> went, he, he went to Dubai for us. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story in Hong Kong. He, he, he gets put up at the best hotel there. So he comes out from his room, and he opens the door, and he wants to leave his tray outside. Now, all he's got is a pair of undies on, and he's got this long rust of fern hair yeah, into yeah. It on the floor. So as he comes to go out, the door closes behind him, <gasps> and he's left his card inside. Uh, so he can't get back in now, and he's under <laughs> He has to go down to, you know, to the, to the front to get yeah. another a door key, and he's got nothing on except a, so his a, under rust. Yeah. <laughs> and he, sure. said he, he said he didn't realize that the door locked behind him but, had a card yeah. to push in there. <laughs> it must have been a sight yeah. when, uh, for so hard, yeah. when, when they were at the reception desk yeah, with, with, the, with the key and, and, and Rasta. Yeah. Well, he's, a, he's a legend. Eh? And uh, also your time overseas and all was good and, and, and fantastic. And, and Dubai was a, was a great place. Eh? Um, yeah, it was, I think Mark's trying to get back there now. You know, everything's laid on. It's the top horses. Yeah. Feed is great. There's, grooms are professional. It's just a different world, really. So would it be fair to say if you were to go to any place in the world to train a racehorse, it would be Dubai? I would think so. Dubai, Hong Kong. Australia's good racing, but it's hard work as a mm. trainer. Mm. I see the Alexanders are starting to hit their straps now in Oz. And, and you work when you go there. Yeah. You ask uh, Peter Musk, it will tell you. Yeah, Frank, um, the you trained a very good horse. Uh, just my memory at the moment. I'm battling to remember things. What's your name again, George? Um <laughs> Good sprinter. What was it? Uh, you've had so many. Uh, uh. Um, I've had Antius. Um, a game back. I mean, we yeah. had Alderiza. Yeah. Um, shit, what other sprinters did we have? Yeah, do, uh, group one. He, war we, artist. Yeah, he war went overseas. artist. And, and I'm just trying to remember the one. The one we had Tussak Treasure time. Cove years ago. Um, fairly recently, uh, fairly recently, I won awards. Man, I've seen the, the the photograph in your in your office. Not Antius. It could be Antius. Anyway, we'll War think of artist the, was another one. No, no, no. We'll think of the name. We'll get the name. Uh, we'll get the name of that of that horse. I'm guessing name. I'm too young for that, eh? Yeah, no, I can't. We can't ask. How long ago are you talking? Uh, Frankie, you just started. I think you just left. Me and myself. Yeah, Chocolicious. Chocolicious. Yeah, well, that's the one I'm thinking of. She, Chocolicious. She, yeah, she won a Group One. Uh, yes, won the Alan Robertson. Yeah, that's the one. And mm. you, it was you. you yeah, tried. that's yeah. right. Uh, you, uh, what uh, and uh, it was a it should have been Louis Shorthead and uh, Alan Robertson. Okay, okay. Um, you never forgiven me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chocolate is that right? She's uh, gone to do some breeds. She's a breeder. Yes, the man, enough, uh, um, Mark the cock bought a baby by um, Frankel out of her. That's wow. right. He never raced. He, he he just said it wasn't good enough to race, but it was so well bred they just sent it to stud. Stud, okay. But I wonder, you know, they talk about the Frankels overseas. The Frankels are what, uh, top, champions. Yes, but they haven't really. Uh, the I don't know why. Because why I wonder. I hey? mean, Justin had that one look to be quite good, and it was disappointing. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is, but. I'm obviously he's a great stallion. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's chocolicious. That's right. I, I love that horse, chocolicious. That's the name. Because I think maybe because we all love chocolate, that's fine. Um, your owners, you've had some good owners in your time, and you're still lucky that you've got some lovely owners. And one in particular is a, is a gentleman who is such a pleasure to deal with, Dudley Cherry. Yeah, so well, he's, he's, you know, I was, his dad very well. Um, Punny's dad was very good mates with Ormond Ferraris. Uh, and, and he was always pranking Ormond Ferraris. I'll tell you a funny story. He used to always drink whiskey. So one night uh, he, he gets a bottle of Shivers Regal and he pours some uh, bells in it into the Shivers Regal. So he invites Orman round. So Orman comes round and he p- gets a Shivers out like this and he pours it. 
So I'm in Frost Lodge, so thick, and he says to you, oh, God, how much better does this taste than any other whiskey? Sure. Me and it was Bells. He had port on the <laughs> ship. It's really good bottle. He said, you did you clown it? It's, it's uh, Bells, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay, so, yeah, and um, you were telling us off here about 30 horses, 35 horses, the most, a lot of young horses, young string. Yeah, I've got 30 horses, but I've got like 18 babies, which is nice. Um, Looking forward to the juvenile season. I've got a new guy called uh, Sid Mudley. He's supported me and oh, we've got 12 horses now from him and we're going nice. back in november again he's been a whew, oh, wonderful been a breath of fresh air. how did you did you meet him in a social occasion or no funny enough he was recommended to you by salvin mudley okay for his okay. son because salvin worked with me for years and that i ran friendly with him and this guy came in and he loves it absolutely yeah, loves it oh, i think it might have been when we were uh, on the weekend uh, we were taking photos of the horses leaving for cape town i saw a gentleman at your stable must have been him and yeah it seems like a, a, a he, age yeah he yeah. loves it he comes there he just likes to be around the horses okay. um, oh well, thank goodness for that and he's learning basically yeah, and he's new so you, oh, you are fun. you are an animal lover now you know we've all got phobias in our life and uh, he, he, he's <laughs> not gonna my good friend ever is never gonna kill me we've all got phobias yeah. if you put a cockroach on this table or cockroach on the floor you'll see me at the at the 800 meter mark <laughs> i'm gone i'm petrified and i have a phobia of cockroaches i've had a cockroach at home that I can't find. I've gone to a hotel for the night. I, 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 I'm terrified. This man on my left has a t- petrified of dogs. He has a phobia of dogs. I'm so proud of him because he's he's dealing with his phobia. I'm starting to deal with my with my with my uh, cockroach phobia. What, what would you do if you were pranked? Just say you were sleeping, and um, uh, you were to me. put a someone were to put a fake cockroach on your. St- Real, or something. I've had what would friends you do? of mine throw dead cockroaches at me and they've been horrible to me. <laughs> they've been absolutely horrible. And I, I scream. I scream and I run. I used to have friends who used to eat cockroaches. And oh, well, I suppose God. they are, but also... At yeah, school, there's a oh, joke, you know. There's a joke. Oh, no, no, no. A cockroach, not for me. So he's mm. petrified of dogs. And you, know, you get people that are petrified of spiders. And you get people that are petrified of... this. I'm a mother, my dear mother. I to, so it took me years to, to literally pull her into a lift. She wouldn't go into a lift. She would Whoa. be yeah. muck sweat. Now she goes in the lift of the Roma revolving 33 floors up. So that's all about dealing with your phobia. So I'm proud of him because he would never even touch a horse. Now he touches a horse and he's getting there. But you're an animal lover. Uh, I've always been animals. Uh, you feed the monkeys here at Summerfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I, many I, loaves I, of bread do you go through? Too much. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've got this, I can't see a starving animal. I have to stop. It's, uh, we weird as yeah. animal loving people. Cats, you've got, I mean, you, you started yeah. off with four or five cats, you've got maybe 20. Tracy now. left me cats there. She left me about 10, Tracy Willard. Now I've got 50. 50 cats. Wow, you're. So sure. cages and cages of cat oh, parents you purchase. I'm always buying food every day. Every day. And at home, Frank, you've got your uh, dogs. Actually, I got thought the other night when I got to bed, how many animals have you fed before? Because I feed all my horses. I feed monkeys, I feed cats. I don't know, 200 animals, I don't know. Sure. I mean, I love animals, you yeah. know. I think well, you know, funnily enough, uh, we live, obviously, you out here in, in, in Summerfeld area, and it's a bit more country-like, and where I am down in Rahil, we're down in Durban, in Amgani Park, just on the on side of the Amgani River, that beautiful bird park way up on the hill there. Mm-hmm. And the monkeys come through. And, you know, I, I, I took a... St- and, and people will agree with me, some will disagree. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And I said to my wife, I said, you know, these, they come to the window, they've got their babies on them and yeah, I mean, how can you turn them away? How can you and turn I, them Now, I, I feed them. And mm. every single time, my wife will tell you, and as I'm feeding them, I say, I'm thinking of Frank now, because yeah. Frank walks around some of us, feeds the monkeys all the bread. And every time I feed them at home. And at uh, home, I mean, they, they, they actually wake me up in the morning. Yeah. They knock on the window. And you know what? If you, I, I, People say they can get vicious. Yes, they can get yeah. vicious. But if you're nice to them, and they feel that I've you're not a threat. I've never had a problem. They take the bread from my hand. They, they, uh, mm. they, so, okay, so you love your animals. Um, that situation, too, is going to get worse because we're taking over their land, basically, correct, all correct. the time. We're getting bigger and bigger and going more into their territory. So yeah, absolutely. what are they going to do? Yeah, what yeah. other pets do you have at all? Uh, I have two dogs. I have a macaw, parrot. <laughs> A hand raised, he's like a person, he just walks around. <laughs> he chases the dogs, actually. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> uh, no, we, of course, uh, you, you, you haven't got any pets. You're still, no de- pets dealing, you're still dealing with your phobia. But that's okay, yeah. it's okay. And it's ma- good that you're man enough to say that you've got a phobia. I'm man enough to say, uh, maybe, fr- well, Frankie's been to the army. You see, that's the yeah. difference. He went to the army, we didn't. That's well, why we got these phobias. My brother always teases me. He says when he 
when he gets his own place, he's going to have a dog. And I always tell him, I'm never going to visit you there. No, you will by that I'm, time. I'm not your visiting brother, you. Your brother's still <laughs> young. And, and by the time he grows up to own his own home, you will certainly have got dealt with your phobia no, because you've come a long that. way. You've come a long way. I mean, you, in the beginning, you wouldn't come to Summerfeld Clubhouse yeah. uh, because the dogs were in the... Yeah, and now you're sitting... You're a bit don't edgy. get across tables. Yeah, don't go oh, oh, his nose, uh, I've Max. A, I've already had an experience. My first uh, time at Summerfeld experience with dog. With Max. With, Max. Dog with Max. Sure. <laughs> he's a beautiful yes, dog. He's, eh? a, he's a magnificent he's strong, dog. Eh? Cool. Strong boy. Okay. Um, where do you live, Frank? Just to wrap uh, up. Winston Park. Eh? Winston Park. Okay. Yeah. And, and that, that, I suppose what, it's a 10 minutes or so to get home. Yeah, it's, it's not it's too bad. 15, basically. 15 or so. Yeah. Okay. So you're at Winston Park. Um, Married kids? No, no, no. That's why he's living the single life. Living the single life, yeah, yeah. Thank that's you. What I th- that's why it's, I think it's easier to keep going in the racing game uh, when you haven't got too many workers with finances. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. and especially with all the horses and the uh, animals that he's feeding. But uh, your mom's still around, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and and any siblings? I've got a sister. She's actually just moved to the UK. Okay. She's not very happy there. She says the weather's not too good. Not too great. Right. Oh. And your mom still takes it. Keen and has a little flutter. Oh, yeah. 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 So the mouse has crossed the line. She's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, just oh, pack up the punting. <laughs> pack up the punting. Well, Frank, yeah, we could... Uh, I'm going to chat to, to some of my colleagues about maybe having a... A bit of a, a TV show, maybe not this year because the year is nearly over, but certainly yeah. next year. And we'd love to, if we do have that platform, you know, guys like yourself, there's so many guys and girls that have got such lovely stories of the past. Yeah. The podcast is, you old timers, you know, had all the stories. I mean, I used to stand every day next to Mr. Brown Sr. Oh, those stories. It was always a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Ferrara, same thing. It was always <laughs> a story about the game in those days and his snooker days. And yeah. They battled in those days too. They also used to have to scheme to get some money. Yeah. Yeah. So he used to, used to play snooker first two games. He said he used to go no good. <laughs> They'd double up the money, then you'd win, you know. Yeah. He's a very good snooker player, funny. Touching, touching on um, the year's almost over and uh, it's K, the Cape summer season's upon us and uh, the high felt season. You follow racing in, yeah, uh, yeah. in the high felt and the Cape. Any, any specific horses that you're looking forward to seeing in action? Well, look, that horse, obviously, of Candace Bass's, I mean, he's... Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, I mean, he looks like he's a champion the way he won yes. another day, too. I mean, it seems even Glendals runs against him. Um, That's I think he's really set to run soon, in November, mid-November. Glendals was impressive, yeah, and he's got yes. Group 1, but say, that horse is one. And Mark yeah. DeCock got a few horses, too, just bubbling under. Yes, you know? yes. I mean, a very nice horse the other day. I think he won the Dingons. Um, Shoemaker. No, the other horse ran fourth. Came Union from Long. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Union, Union Square. 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 Nice Union type. Square, yeah. Very nice. Mm. I remember listening to a program once or an interview, and they've always rated that horse, you know. Big, beautiful horse. But we've got some exciting times ahead. You're quite Absolutely. right. Absolutely. But the, the year is, isn't it amazing that the, we, it, Christmas is, is next month? The time, time is flying. flying. Um, what is, when is the next soccer game? When is Liverpool, when, when are your teams playing? When is the next? Uh, yeah, Liverpool's playing on Sunday. Never said that. Are you yeah. playing Sunday? Spurs. At Spurs. Um, I I can't remember. No, Lafferty's a Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you might get rolled there. Ah, uh, well, no, the based on the get rolled, ba- so based on Liverpool, we playing Villa, I think, maybe. on Saturday. Villa, Aston Villa, so it shouldn't be too hard for us. We're getting well, better. Well, please make sure the two of you are not not the f- far away when the <laughs> games are on. But no, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not a hater. You get oh, the yes. Liverpool fans are haters. No, I, we, I they are the ha- same about United fans. They are happier. When United lose, they win Liverpool win. <laughs> no. That's the fact. That's the fact. I can't contribute because I, mean, I know nah. nothing about soccer. All I know about soccer is that you've got to get as many wickets as possible. Am I on the right track? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Guys, talking about soccer, here's our sponsors, Soccer 6. Uh, sorry, Score 6 and Score 10. Of course, there's Soccer 6 and Soccer 10. There's plenty of, uh, of soccer bets, but the latest ones are Score 6 and yeah. Score 10. Tab Gold. Get it's your a new bet with Tab Gold. It's a new bet with Tab Gold. Score 6 and score 10. Go on to the website. Have a look. There's also Greyhound Racing. Greyhound uh, uh, Punting. There's lots of uh, action for you I on Tab Gold. I think the Greyhound uh, Racing is growing on growing Growing, on a few growing phenomenally. Yeah. I was having a chat to our racing executive uh, and, and yeah, the uh, Greyhound Racing is growing, which is which is good, you know, which is fantastic. Uh, year end, we've touched on uh, soccer, our sponsors. Score 6 and score 10. Thank you very much. And uh, all that's left for me is to thank Frank for his time. It, I know you're Pleasure. busy. You've been up early in the morning. And uh, thanks. Nice to hear the stories. And maybe if we do get a TV show off the ground next year, we'd like, love to have you guys like yourself and Louis Hussle and I are keen. And let's just see what next year brings. Sure.
But yeah, thanks for your time and, and, and keep tuning out the winners and thanks for everything that you've done and served the racing industry for so many years, Frank. No pleasure. Lovely. You know. Rahil Radhikrishna and I have enjoyed our morning with Frank. Thank you to you, the punter. Thank you to you, the supporter. Thank you to uh, our viewers and we wish you all the very best. As we say always, please try and remain positive. Don't slate one another. We're all doing our best. And the most important thing is we're doing it for the love of horse racing. From Warren Inferno, Real Radio Krishna, the whole team behind the scenes, we look uh, forward to seeing you soon. And thank you for your continued support. And we'll see you, as always, in the number one box.